uh, Crystal yeah. Palace against Man United. 0-0. Zero, zero. Oh, what a game. Uh, what a, what a, what a, what a, what a, to be honest, man, it's a bit of a dull fest. But it's like every, every weekend, Man United just seem to just keep bringing it on. They just keep, keep outdoing themselves. I mean, what was the prediction? Everyone was, well, everyone was kind of saying Crystal Palace might do it. Might be a draw. I, I, I didn't think United were going to win. Uh, but seriously, Steve, man, I mean, this is this is becoming a bit of an issue for you guys at the moment. I think, uh, Abdi, when we look into this particular match, Manchester United versus Crystal Palace, it's a tough match for Manchester United, despite uh, them winning 7-0 against uh, a championship side, that is Bansley. Uh, going into this match, Crystal Palace usually uh, beat Manchester United last season by four goals to nil. So I didn't think it was an easy match for Manchester United. I know it's a frustrating draw, and uh, I was I was surprised when I saw Rashford off the bench. I thought uh, from his performance last game, he deserved to at least have a start. He scored against uh, Southampton, and he also scored against Bansley Abreast. So yeah. I thought maybe he deserved to be in the starting lineup. But uh, let's give credit to the uh, to the Crystal Palace goalkeeper that Henderson. The saves he made he made during that particular match were superb. Manchester United could have easily won that particular match, but uh, Henderson was superb, saving uh, the two on short targets from uh, Ganacho, and also we saw the clear cut uh, header from uh, Delight. That was a goal. But uh, I think as far as our team is concerned, we are heading in the right direct direction. And uh, the Premier League is not easy. You cannot win. Uh, you you can win one particular match, and the next match, minute you think that, you know, we are going to get the revenge. But Crystal Palace, honestly, a tough team. And uh, going on to the next match, I think we have uh, Tottenham, which is going to still be a very tough match. So as far as uh, the team is progressing, I don't think if, uh, we are heading in the right direction. Honestly. Okay, okay, okay. That's, that's, uh, I have to say, Steve, Steve, uh, Steve in Spain, uh, yes. this is where my United are. This is where my United are right now. I mean, they they're complimenting Crystal Palace goalkeepers. I know. Like, you know, you know, <laughs> how we're not, doing, how we're you know, doing. <laughs> yeah, when you're not doing good, you're just gonna say my neighbor is doing good. You know, when, when you're when you're flower but it's not flowering, you're gonna say my neighbor's backyard is just doing good. It's I tough, just it's, do tough times. About it. it's tough times yeah. for these guys, man. It's tough times. But then you know what? I have from my point of view, when I look at my United, yeah, it's like there's I have no sympathy for these guys. Because they spend money like no one's business. Do you know what I, I mean? Know, I know. It's not like the Glazers have shut down the bank and, you know, my United have got to work around with the youth or, you know, go on a little bit of budget or this. Mm. Just like they they sign, like, since since Alex Ferguson has left, I mean, what manager can you point at, really? Can you say that that now that manager could have done something? Probably Mourinho, yeah? Is it Mourinho yeah, one of the most trophies at my United since him? Yeah. He tried, and yeah. Then, but then after that, you guys never really went for, you know, up and coming young managers who are doing stuff, you know? I never thought Ten Hag was a good fit. Um and he's a bit he's a bit arrogant, you know. Uh I would have gone, I would have gone for some I mean that that time when Pochettino was available, I think that would have been a good signing. But at this point, man, my United man, Steve, I mean see Steve Spain, yeah, I need your view on this man. Where 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 do these guys where do these guys go from here, man? I mean how at this rate, they're not. They're definitely not going to be in the top four if they continue like this. Uh, honestly, uh, I agree with you. Uh, if you put the facts, uh, you see, right now we're going to use the facts because now we're going to use facts. It's not about what is going to come because Man United has proven that since the the foggy time, Manchester is not reliable. Apart from the few trophies that uh, Mourinho did, uh, had to take away after after the the, the exit of. Uh, Ferguson, because you see Manchester United for one, during Fagi time, there's one thing that always stood out, consistency, number one. Mm. We don't see that from Manchester United anymore. Manchester United is a team that can, there's a time you could face Manchester United in the Old Trafford pitch, you feel like this is a, this is a, a game I'm going to defend, either I come up with the one point or I'm going to lose it. But this time you go to Manchester United, home or away, it's not, a, it's, it, you know, it's not guaranteed. You can you can smash Man United whenever you want. It's like you just open a door, you go shit in and go back back out. Just just in a in, in a polite way, just that Manchester United is just it's all the Manchester United we used to see during the foggy time to to use in the in the better terms. Mm. Manchester United was a team that was feared. It was feared by Manchester City, a team that is winning trophies back to back, breaking the record of the Premier League. 
despite the, the allegations. You see, Manchester United was a team that was feared with small teams. But now when you see Manchester United losing, crucial, uh, very, in, in, let me just put this, when you see Manchester United losing lazy games, I know every team in the Premier League is, is worth it, but when you see Manchester United losing to lazy teams, teams that don't want to spend, teams that don't have quality players, it gives you a lot of question marks in the back of your head because I, I think Manchester United is not the great one that we used to know before because the spell is, going, is not going to be the, the few years they've missed. We, I, know, I, know, I know we're not competing against Arsenal, but let me tell you one thing. If you cannot step up from what you are right now because, yes, you like today's game, you had the possession, you had the shots on target, you had, you had the, the touches, you had the passes, but when you cannot convert all that into a, a, a differential point game, then I don't think you're contenders of even the Europa League. I think, I, 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 of, I think yeah. like, I, I, I mean, sorry to cut you off here, but, but, I, but I think my United are the, one of the problems my United have is, is the English media. You know, they, yeah. they've got a lot of these high players that they could have moved on a long time ago, but somehow... You know, they've been made to think these guys are going to come good. They're going to be world class. I mean, mm -hmm. you look at Marcus Rashford, he's one person example. Remember, it wasn't long ago they were trying to compare him to Cristiano Ronaldo when he was like playing. <laughs> and then you see my United fans all like, yeah, yeah, this is the new, this is the new Ronaldo. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now you yeah, look at this young boy, uh, Maynu. He has a couple of decent games last season and he's the next, you know, next coming of like, you know, Gerard or something. And then now this season, he just, you know, he just looks completely over, overthrown. Like, he just, just keeps getting destroyed in the midfield. So I think a lot of United got a lot of high players, and I don't think they've been brave enough. Uh, it's one of the things I give credit to Arteta. He knew how to just get rid of these so-called runarounds that weren't doing nothing in the squad, you know. And I think United have got a lot of players like that. And I'm now starting to get a bit of a feeling that these players are going to start the way they're playing is like you know getting getting the manager sacked kind of performance right now. Yeah, yeah. Hmm? I think I'm explaining the same thing because you see, when you see players having an attitude towards the coach, because you see, they also they, their career is also on the line because they don't want to blame it on the coach. They just they just want to do to get away with it in the first place. Because and then you see, when you don't perform as a player, even even just naturally, you always put the blame on the on the coach because you'll be like, no, the coach wasn't playing me, because now right now. He's the one to lose, not the players, because the coach has has more to lose, and because the, the, the players have the contract to the end of the season, the coach only has this period because Manchester United looks to, needs to look like the great Manchester. I'm gonna say the great Manchester United. But still, the what, so what I'm gonna say is that the, the players have nothing to lose, but the coach has more to lose. I think it's about time he realizes he realizes that he has this player and this player. Let him man up. And do what he's supposed to do because I, I'm, I'm not saying Manchester is a small team. Manchester is a great team. You have good players, but just know who to play at what time. Steve, Let's just call football. But football. Steve, Steve, let me ask. Let me ask Steve. Steve, listen. You got you got Ganacho, you got Dalo, you got the Zerski guys. From my point of view, high players. Tell me why they're not. I think I think uh, one thing, Abdi, when you look into this particular Manchester United team, I think. Uh, Eric Ten Hag winning the FA Cup saved him his job because clearly uh, pre-FA uh, pre Cup he didn't perform. Uh, we finished number eight. There were a lot of questions that were raised about this particular coach. But the moment he won the FA Cup and, you know, when the Man United board did his, their interviews on who to, to reappoint after yeah, Ten Hag, exactly. they didn't find us. So I think uh, he, he was given the... Uh, signings he needed. We saw we brought in the likes of uh, Delight, uh, uh, who, who is a former player who he has coached. We saw he brought in the likes of Zix. He is bringing on t players who are who he's been coaching before. So I think as far as we are concerned, Eric Ten Hag has been given what he needs to perform. And it, it still pains me the fact that when we have the quality players like uh, the Zix scored uh, against Bologna, scored for Bologna a good number of goals. We've seen a uh, Hoyland coming back from injury. Honestly, when you look at this, in this Manchester United side, we see we have quality players. But it's just the fact that the coach can't get the best out of them. We've seen, uh, if, if it's a matter of uh, the defensive midfielders, we've had a quite a number of issues with the past uh, defensive midfielders we've had. We brought in Ugate. 
today why haven't we got it started honestly so i think the question should be is ten hag the right coach for manchester united because as far as signings are concerned as far as the board is supporting is concerned he's given all the support Drawing against Crystal Palace, honestly, but you is think a he's been given support? You, you, you think he's like? I don't think what? he's been given that. He's been given support to sign the players yeah, that he the, wanted. The, we've seen that uh, he's been so vocal, saying you know they are behind him and uh, they trust the coach for the next. They've given him a contract of two years, honestly. So as far as I'm concerned, as a Manchester United fan, I think we really need to look into this coach Eric Ten Hag because if. As far as performance is concerned, we are not getting any better. And the moment we keep on dropping points, other teams today, other teams have won. Chelsea have won this match. Tottenham has won this match. Liverpool has won this match. We've dropped our point. So I think uh, if terms of the title race and, you know, if Manchester United will get in the top four, these are set back, honestly. Well, okay, let me, let me, okay, let me say this one thing, yeah, just, just uh, while we're closing this down. Um... Just quickly, guys, again, subscribe, please. Please subscribe. You're helping this channel grow. Premier Fan TV in Africa. Um, let me ask you this, guys. Yeah. When you look at this Man United team, how many players in that Man United team get in the Arsenal team? Like be be honest, be honest with yourself, Steve. Like uh I know I know Steve Spain. He's, he's, you're you're blank. I got just like me. I'm just trying to find out. You really think there's anyone in that Man United team that would that, that would play? <laughs> then that I'm not blank. I, I, I I'm not blank. I know they have quality players. I don't because that's Actually, what I'm thinking. Because that's because that's 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 where it comes down to. When you look at Ten Hag, he, he can't work miracles with that. You know, he can't because honestly, he can't, honestly, he can't make miracles with that with that team, like with that squad. Abdi, Abdi, let me mention these players here. Yeah? Yeah. Today, let me just start with the first eleven. Yeah, they had Angel Nan on goal, Mozarawi from Morocco, the lead. Netherlands. I, I just want to make the facts. The facts remain to be facts, yeah? Yeah. When you see such such players, eh? Diallo, Bruno Fernandes, Eriksen, Diallo, Ganacho, Kobe Maino, and then Z Zizke, it asks it it, it 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 gives you to, to beg the question, yeah. I know today the, the old man himself, the one and only. <laughs> The, the one how, how how do you how do you name the the, 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 the nickname that I saw the Kenyans uh, we Kenyans gave him uh, the one and only <laughs> Muzemzima Casemiro yeah Casemiro yeah you see they have a lot of like Ugate Uyari Hodgland Rashford Anthony on the bench bro you you cannot tell me that they don't have quality players because when they signed see the value of of how the the value of uh, of An Anthony yeah. I know the, the value of uh, of Casemiro was slightly not like his, his prime time, but he's a quality player. Nobody in football, either either playing in Greece, either playing in South Africa, Kenya, who doesn't know Casemiro. We know his quality. But they didn't know, but they didn't need that. Casemiro, yeah. Casemiro was a shadow of a player. Exactly. They himself. just bought whatever, they just bought a name. Yeah. They didn't buy they didn't buy quality. They bought a name. They're not they're not looking at the positioning, they're not looking at the level, yeah. the age that he's at, he's coming from a different setup. You know, I don't know why they haven't been trying to chase the players. Why? Why were Man United try to sign Casado when Chelsea were bringing him? Why were Man United try to sign even uh, Declan Rice? I didn't see them try to go in for Declan Rice. You know, the Arsenal Man United got more transfer money to spend than Arsenal. You know, mm -hmm. so but then when you're bringing in people like Casemiro and you're paying him that huge salary, the wages that you use, you know, yeah, I know, and he's, salary, and he's old. I'm like, yeah, but that's not like for the Premier League. That's not right. And then when you look at this team now today, you can see why they basically shot blanks today. There's nothing in that team. To, there's no creativity. You look at Eriksen. Eriksen's not uh, in that position to do it. He's playing defensive midfield with Kobe Mano and Fernandez. Fernandez is another player. I don't even know how, how many years he was. <laughs> Apparently, he's, he's, better, he's meant to be better than De Bruyne. I don't know where that came from a while ago. So he's meant to be like such a quality. Like he just looks like another lost course. You know what I mean? Like I'm tired, I'm tired of seeing players that not, don't perform consistently and get compared to other players. You know, I I I I don't even compare Erdogan. I don't even like play, compare Erdogan to De Bruyne. Erdogan is not on De Bruyne's level yet. You know, you can't be you can't be talking to players like that who've done things. You know what I mean? Who won big big trophies for their teams? You got to still step up, and that's yeah. why I think like out of the insult that people will talk about Fernandez and and Casemiro and all these guys. Yes, Casemiro's done great at Real Madrid, but he basically came to United to retire. You know, 
He just came to get that yeah. that huge paycheck that Real Madrid were not going to pay him. That's that's the reality of it. If Real Madrid weren't paying that kind of crazy salary to him, <laughs> you know, they weren't. They were never going to. But okay, but Steve, just quickly in the final note, just to get your view on this. Um, I mean, where do where do where do United go forward here? If if say the next five games doesn't go well for Ten Hag, I mean, do you think he's going to be under huge pressure, or you think they're just going to be like, okay, let's just see how the season goes, or you know? I think uh, our next match is against FC20. That is uh, our opener in the Europa League. Then after that, we face Tottenham, which is a very tough match. I think it's high time we, you know, have a look into this Ten Hag issue. Because if we look at the Manchester United squad, they have quality players. You know, it took Arsenal time to build a squad. And, you know, Arsenal uh, coach Michael Ateta, he built his squad around a defence. That is uh, William Saliba, uh, Gabriel... These guys are really doing well. When you compare the squad that Manchester United currently have and, you know, Arsenal or other teams in the Premier League, Manchester United have spent a lot of money, you know, trying to bring in quality players. But it's just a matter of the coach getting the best out of them, which is not doing that currently. So I think uh, as far as uh, the title, you know, uh, right now we are focusing on the title uh, on the top four. No, that no, your coach, your coach right is in trouble. But just you can let me pause you one second. You can come back to it, yeah. I'm just gonna just gonna give you this. So you like you saying your next game is um, you're at home to FC Twenty. After that, then you're at home to Tottenham. Then you're away to Porto. Then mm -hmm. you're away to Aston Villa. Mm -hmm. Then you're mm -hmm. home to Brentford. Mm -hmm. And then you're away to Fenerbahce. And then you're away to West Ham. And then you're at home to Chelsea. Yeah. <laughs> this Manchester United I'm going to cut Wait, you short I'm but even just to cut off just to cut off the European games yeah your Premier League next one Premier League game you're home to Tottenham away to Aston Villa mm. home to Brentford uh, away to West Ham and home to Chelsea is your next Premier League games and sorry I'm going to cut you short but from the be, that let's go back to Steve again it could be Ten Hag you know, going oh, to the job right, centre right. after that. All right. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, our next five uh, matches will determine. You know, they are not uh, easy matches. Against Solenham, that is a very uh, tough match. We we are also kicking off our Europa League uh, uh, matches. I think uh, what needs to be done with this team, re honestly, uh, Ten Hag really needs to select, have a proper first eleven. Honestly, does Rashford really need to start on the bench after having such good performances? But, you know, one thing with Manchester United is they never perform when it comes to pressure. That's the other thing. You saw today against Crystal Palace, that was a very blunt, blunt performance. We couldn't even put the balls back on the net. So as far as I'm concerned, going into these next five matches, I don't think if Eric Trahag really stands a chance, you know, of getting this team to back to its level best. As much as he have the best players or, you know, quality players, but uh, he's not up for the task. It's well, I guess we're going to disagree. We're going to disagree on that one, United having quality players. Okay, right now we're on the last minute. Just quickly, uh, Steve in Spain, just uh, under like 30 seconds. Final yeah, thoughts. Think... Final thoughts on United. All right, all right. my final thoughts, I think, uh, one thing is that, uh, yeah, Manchester is great in words, but in playing, I don't think uh, it's something I can... Uh, agree with because uh, I, I've watched football for a long time to know when Manchester is great and that is the foggy time era but for now I think they gotta they just have a lot to do to be in the level where Liverpool, Aston Villa, Arsenal, Manchester City and the top four likes oh, they just got a lot to do to be where the top four need to be that's my parting shot okay uh, Steve, again, down on, on your side, uh, just quickly in 30 seconds, uh, Steve, what's gonna what's your final thought of United? Because when Arsenal were this bad, like I, 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 didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I knew the players were just crap and, you know, and the managers, we had quality managers, but the players weren't up to it. Now we have a squad and the manager's decent as well. But from your side, just quickly, 30 seconds, where, where, where did my United go from here? I think, uh, from here, Man United really, really need to go back to the drawing board because uh, it's what it's a step forward and like three steps backward. We win one game convincingly, and you yeah. know, 
we get back to the small man united so i think uh, the coach really needs to select his team he needs to come up with a first 11 a team that he really trusts because if we continue this way i don't see us even challenging for the top four today was a must win game for us against crystal palace crystal palace beat man united four nil last leg but uh i think going forward as Manchester United, we still have coach in our, you know, his, we still have trust in our players. We have players who can deliver. It's just a matter of, you know, getting them in the right rhythm. And uh, once everybody's back from tra from uh, the injury, we saw Mount coming back from injury. We saw Taylor Malasha coming back from injury. I think with the time, this Manchester United squad is going to gel and, you know, it's going okay. to do marvelous. So it's just a matter of first time.